On this episode of Adventures with Jeff Corwin, we travel from the dreary Amazon jungle up to the fascinating wilderness of Appalachia. While in Appalachia, I, Jeff Corwin, was on a quest to find one of the most interesting superorganisms that live on this planet, that of the Apis mellifera, more commonly known as the honeybee. Despite the obstacles that lay ahead of me, I, Jeff Corwin, was determined to find this well-sought-after beehive. Come on. With luck today, maybe we'll find one of those beehives. We'll have to go through the rainforest. I, Jeff Corwin, must confess, making my way through the rainforest was one of the most difficult feats I have ever performed in my entire life. Do you see that? Do you see that over there? And there it was, the Holy Grail of Mother Nature, the notorious hive oh of the Apis mellifera. I, Jeff Corwin, took the willpower that was left in me and intrepidly broached the bee's lair. In the hive, I, Jeff Corwin, encountered the most uncanny thing Drones were bustling, and even overtaking the workers in higher numbers. This leads me to ponder, why are there so many more drones than workers in this hive? As you can see on this particular comb, not all of these drones are of the same size. The ones that are smaller resulted from egg-laying workers. The reason why these workers become capable of egg-laying is due to the absence of QMP, more commonly known as queen mandibular pheromone. Alas, the one type of honeybee that produces QMP is the queen, and there's not one that rules over this colony. Here you can see workers fervently repairing a section of nectar cells in vain. The truth of the matter is that this colony will not survive over the oncoming winter. This is the proof that the colony failed in raising another queen. It was a queen cell, but now is only the gravesite of this colony's last hope. It is very likely that the queen emerged from this cell, but, alas, was not able to survive, possibly because of the frail number of workers. This is what the queen cell resembled before the ill-fated queen emerged. All that is left now are egocentric drones, consuming what is left of the honey stalls and refusing to contribute to the colony's well-being. Because of the state of this colony, the workers were more hostile than usual, and so I, Jeff Corwin, had no choice but to flee. In order to understand more about the Queen's role in the hive, I, Jeff Corwin consulted one of the world's most renowned queen bee specialists, Dr. Quinn Mandolin Farah. I, Jeff Corwin, explained to Dr. QMP in utmost and accurate detail what I, Jeff Corwin, had witnessed in the wilderness of Appalachia. Since it was so hard to describe in words, I, Jeff Corwin, 
how to construct the most elaborate model of the hive. She elucidated to me the reasons for the bizarre behavior I had stumbled upon in the colony. She first started by explaining the physiological differences between the laying worker and the workers, which occur as a result of the absence of QMP. Then she enlightened me with what a normal colony actually consists of. In the normal colony, the queen has dominion over the role of reproduction. In order to do so, she releases QMP to suppress the ovaries of workers. Workers here are cleaning the cells thoroughly in preparation not only for depositing food, but also for the inspection by the queen prior to egg laying. Here, the workers are sticking their heads into the brood cells in order to feed the larvae. They do this frequently because they progressively provision their brood, whereas other social insect species do mass provisioning. It is clear that these foragers just return from a rich pollen source due to the packed pollen baskets on their hind legs. This is the first phase of queen development, a queen cup provisioned with royal jelly. And finally, the queen herself, supported by her loyal subjects. This queen, in particular, has a parasitic varroa mite on its back. QMP also induces a retinue formation around the queen, where the workers antenate, lick, and guide the queen around the comb. As you can see here, the retinue guides the queen to cells that are ready to be inspected. She does so by simply dipping her head into the prepare cell. The queen is the only one capable to produce worker eggs because of her well-developed ovaries. Her ability to do this, along with the help of QMP, prevents workers from developing functional ovaries. Thanks to the help of Dr. QMP, I, Jeff Cole, finally understood the mysteries that were buried within the bee's lair. After being enlightened, I, Jeff Corwin, had no time to fret and was well on my way to our next expedition. On the next episode of Adventures with Jeff Corwin, we'll be on our way to the frigid deserts of Mongolia. Godspeed.